So in today's lesson, we will look at the test to differentiate between alkenes and alkanes, the two type of hydrocarbons that we are now familiar with. So the first experiment we will do is the substitution of alkanes. So what we do is we have a test tube and we place aqueous bromine into it. Okay, aqueous meaning the bromine has been dissolved in the water. We then put cyclohexane carefully on the top. So there should be two layers, the kind of brown aqueous iodine layer and the clear colourless cyclohexane layer. Okay, so you can clearly see that the hydrocarbon layer floats on top of the aqueous bromine solution. So the next thing we do is we shake the test tube. And you can see that when mixed, the nonpolar bromine moves from the bottom aqueous layer into the top hydrocarbon layer. And this turns the alkane orange. And a small amount of bromine, bromine remains at the bottom, giving the lower aqueous layer a pale orange very pale orange colour. But you have two layers, a very dark orange layer at the top and a very pale orange layer at the bottom. So at this stage, no chemical reaction has occurred. However, if you put the test tube into bright light for 10 minutes, look what happens. After the 10 minutes is up, sitting in the bright light, say of the sunshine outside, or you know, an overhead projector, the bromine in the hydrocarbon layer has decolorized. Okay, the top layer is no longer a dark orange, it is clear. Okay, and the color of the bottom aqueous layer is still the pale orange, as you'd expect from a little bit of bromine left in it. So the reaction between bromine and alkanes is known as a substitution reaction. So what does this mean? Well, substitution reaction is when the bromine has substituted a hydrogen in the alkane. The reaction itself is slow, it requires energy in the form of UV light, and two products are formed, the bromoalkane and hydrogen bromide. So any hydrogen in the chain could be replaced by the bromine atom. So in fact, they're probably in that test tube, on that top layer, many different organic products that have been formed. Okay, so here's just a representation of one of those reactions. So we have um, ethane plus bromine going to ethyl bromide and hydrogen bromide. So even though it's been substituted on one of the, or hydrogen's been substituted by a bromine on one of the atoms, it's possible that you can have many substitutions on any of the hydrogens. So a quite a large range of products are possible in this process. So that's what, look what happens when instead of uh, adding bromine to an alkane, we add it to an alkene. So just as before, aqueous bromine is put into a test tube. This time though, it's cyclohexene that is poured carefully on top, not cyclohexane. Again, the hydrocarbon floats on the more dense aqueous solution, so the upper layer is the cyclohexene. And the lower layer is the aqueous bromine solution. Just as before, we give it a shake, but you'll notice instead of being bright orange, the organic layer, the top layer, is now immediately decolorized, as is the bottom layer. So more bromine from the aqueous layer moves into the organic layer, until all the bromine has reacted. So both layers are now colourless, as opposed to the last reaction with the alkane, where one layer was, the top layer was very orange, and the lower layer was slightly orange. If additional bromine water is added dropwise to the top cyclohexene layer, you also notice that it's instantly decolorised as soon as it hits the layer. So this reaction between bromine and an alkene is not a substitution reaction, it's known as an addition reaction. So what's happened is that the bromine has added to the double bond of the alkene. The reaction is very fast, light this time is not required, and only one product has been formed. In this case, cyclohexene plus bromine gives 1,2-dibromo-cyclohexane. You can see it here. 
can see that the double bond has been broken by the addition of one of the bromines and then addition to the subsequent bromine to give a dibromoalkane. Only one product. There we have it there, the equation. So this time it's ethene plus bromine gives 1,2-dibromoethane. So another reaction you could do is the acidified potassium permanganate reaction with the hydrocarbons. Compounds containing no double or triple bonds are called saturated. Alkanes are an example of this. Saturated just means that every carbon has the maximum number of bonds, four bonds. So compounds containing one or more double bond or triple bond are called unsaturated because these bonds can be broken to add more hydrogen or any other bond, for example, in the last slide, bromine. So purple potassium permanganate solution can be used to distinguish between the saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons or between alkenes and alkanes because alkanes are going to be saturated and alkenes are going to be unsaturated. So here we have it. We have an alkane and an alkene. So basically you've dropped your acidified potassium permanganate solution in first, then you've dropped in your alkane and alkene, so you get your two layers. The lower layer being your aqueous solution containing potassium permanganate, and the top layer being the organic layer containing either the alkene or the alkene. Alkane or the alkene. So then we mix it just as before. So when we shake the test tubes, the alkene decolorizes the purple acidified permanganate, as you can see here. And there is no reaction with the alkane. Okay, reaction with the alkene, reaction with no reaction with the alkane, because the alkene has saturated bonds. Sorry, the alkane has saturated bonds, and the alkene has unsaturated bonds. So because the alkene has unsaturated bonds, it allows the potassium permanganate to oxidize that double bond. So if acid was not added to the permanganate solution, a purple solution would change to a brown precipitate, which is something you should probably look at, maybe come back to in the redox or oxidation reduction chemistry section. So what has happened is that for the alkene, the permanganate ox has oxidized the double bond to form a diol. So essentially, this double bond has been broken, and you form these diol here, which is two alcohol functionalities, and a, now a single bond has formed instead of the double bond. So that's essentially how you differentiate between an alkane and an alkene, either using bromine water or permanganate.